So elasticity is just a theory that describes the behavior, the behavior of some specific continuum media. Those that behave in a certain way, which is called elastic way. So there, is, there, is, there are some additional restrictions or postulates or hypotheses that we do in order that what is coming is valid for a continuum medium, okay? And this is the hypothesis of the linear, by the way, I emphasize the word linear. If I say linear, that means that there is a nonlinear theory, okay? We are not talking about the nonlinear theory. We are talking just about the linear theory, but that's enough, okay? What are the hypotheses, the hypotheses of this linear theory? Well, first, they are hypotheses which are simplifying the general theory. They are not extending hypotheses, but simplifying hypotheses. First, we assume infinitesimal strains. We assume the existence of the uh, unstrained and unstressed reference state. And we assume isothermal, isentropic, and adiabatic processes. Let me say something about that. This you will know. We just introduced the concept of infinitesimal strains, you remember? Infinitesimal strains mean essentially two things. The displacements are small, small with respect to what? With, the, with respect to the size of the body, and the gradients of displacements are also small, both, okay? So the first hypothesis implies that spatial and material configurations are the same, there is no sense in material and distinguishing Material description, spatial expression, material derivative, spatial derivative, local derivative. I mean, all this stuff is just suppressed, okay? Then, another question is that the formation gradient, which is the basis for the strain, is assumed not exactly one. So the, the spatial and the material coordinates are very similar because displacements are very small. So F is not one, but close to one, close to one. Right? We already discussed that. And look, I would like to just pay focus your attention into that equation here. We obtain, essentially, the, the material form of the mass conservation equation. Whenever I refer to the, I've referred to the material conserv uh, mass conservation, in general, I've referred to the continuity equation, which is an spatial version, okay? But what is the material counterpart of the mass conservation? Look, we also derived the equation. The one that said that the density of a given particle at time zero is equal to the density at time t times the determinant of the grain of deformation tensor of this particle at time t, okay? What happens now if this determinant is approximately equal one? So that means that the density doesn't change. So in the infinitesimal strain theory, in material description, we can say that the material description of the density doesn't change for, with time, okay? So look, this also provides automatically the solution of one of the unknowns. I said that one of the unknowns here is the density. What can we say about the density in the uh, infinitesimal strain theory? The density is known equal to the original density. Okay? That is important. So this is why maybe you can be surprised. Why, why is this person talking about densities when in our elasticity, courses, in our structural mechanics courses, density was never unknown. When you solved a framework, or you solve a plate, or whatever a structure you solve, have you ever seen the density as one of the known? No. In the displacements, the stresses, the strains. Why density is not an unknown? Because it's known in virtue of that. The density is the original one. So if I need it eventually, I would just say that the density hasn't changed. Approximately. In the, in, uh, in, at, as far as this equation, this determinant of f is equal to one, which is one of the consequences of infinitesimal strain theory. Okay? So that's why we are dealing with density when you just compute 
mechanics problems, but you are implicitly considering that this is one of the knowns which is solved from the very beginning because density is not changed. Another consequence of the infinitesimal strain theory is about the strains. A strains that have the different measures and that can be expressed in material in a special coordinate. You remember the green Lagrange strains, the Mansi strain tensor. Now they, they all collapse in infinitesimal strain theory in just one measure of strains, which is the infinitesimal strain measure the symmetric gradient of the displacement. Okay? Okay. The second consequence, the second hypothesis, is that there is an state in which strains are zero and the stresses are zero. So uh, that some of these conditions can be released, but essentially we consider that. At the deformed configuration, when I take my material, at the beginning, of course, the strains at the reference configuration at always zero, by definition. But I assume that the stresses are zero too. Okay? So there is one state, in general would be the reference configuration, where stresses and strains will be zero. That's not nothing uh, too complicated by you. And then, this is two hypotheses that at the beginning we'll use. We consider that the deformation processes of our material are both isothermal and adiabatic. What isothermal means? Well, the word is familiar to you. Iso comes from the Greek, equal. Thermal, equal temperature. So we assume that the temperature for a given point, for a given point, I don't refer now to spatial material points because they are the same. For a given point, a long time is already the same. So temperature doesn't depend on time. Okay. So that means, again, the temperature is not an unknown because the temperature of a given point is the temperature that this point had at the reference, reference time. Okay? So that is what allows us, by the way, discard temperature as one of the knowns and we are just solving the mechanical problem. Okay? And that's isothermal. What means isentropic or adiabatic? Let's call it as adiabatic process. Adiabatic processes is adia Batic means equal or no, no exchange of, 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 them of heat. So adiabatic process means that the heat transfer, uh, the heat entering into the body is zero. We have quantified this heat. So we just uh, recall that uh, you just quantified what was the heat entering the body per unit of time. That was one term due to the sources now I integrate a draw, I put draw zero because it's constant. I emphasize that it's constant, the original density. That's the term due to sources, and that's the term due to heat conduction. And this was at the global level, and at the local level, that can be expressed as row zero r plus, plus this term that trans transforms into a divergence equals zero. So when we postulate that the process is adiabatic, we admit that this term, the thermal power entering into the body, is zero. Is zero or negligible? Negligible. So I can have some internal sources of heat, but they are small. The heat is produced small. I can maybe exchange some temperature by heat conduction, but conduct conductivity is so high that this, or so small, that this heat conduction is not. Is not is not relevant. So I just neglect this term, which means, by the way, for all points and for all subsets, that at the local level I assume that this term, rho r minus the vertices of q, is zero. Okay, I neglect this term. That is what adiabatic means. Okay. By the way, it can be proven th that. Uh, the, the, the isentropic process means that the entropy remains constant. Okay? So uh, it can be proven that adiabatic is equal to isentropic. Let's look at the equations we have seen before. And talking about uh, an adiabatic process, in an adiabatic process, the change of total entropy is equal to zero. So it's the same saying adiabatic than isentropic. Okay? Which is different with isothermal. Isothermal is equal temperature. Isentropic, 
i constant entropy. Adiabatic, no heat entering, and then adiabatic is equal to isotopic. Okay? So, I just anticipate the following. This first hypothesis in the second part of this chapter will be released. So we'll consider first <coughs> linear elasticity in which we consider that the process is isothermal at constant temperature. 